Welcome to Advanced Quantum Chemistry and my fourth lecture on Hartree-Fock theory. The topic of this lecture is Brownian theorem. We discussed before that the Hartree-Fock equation as a differential equation or as an eigenvalue problem has an infinite number of solutions. And the n spin orbitals for an n electron system with the lowest energy we call the occupied orbitals and we use them as uh, spin orbitals in the Slater determinant for the Hartree-Fock ground state. That leaves us with infinity minus n unoccupied orbitals psi a. So what can we do with those? Well, of course we can make many more Slater determinants than just this Hartree-Fock. Uh, ground state Slater determinant, we can make Slater determinants where we also use these uh, virtual or unoccupied orbitals and mixtures with, with occupied and unoccupied orbitals. For example, we can make Slater determinants where we have n minus 1 occupied orbitals, meaning n minus 1 of the spin orbitals in the Slater determinant are the same as we had in the Hartree-Fock ground state Slater determinant, and then we have one unoccupied orbital psi. And those <coughs> Slater determinants are typically called single excited determinants, although we should not immediately or we should not necessarily associate these determinants with excited states of a molecule. So I, I would say it would be better to call them singly replaced uh, um, determinants, but the normal nomenclature is to call them singly excited determinants. And they are because we have replaced one of the occupied orbitals, for example, the occupied orbital Ci, we have replaced by an, by an unoccupied, a virtual orbital Psi A. Now let's look at a particular matrix element uh, with one of these uh, singly excited determinants. And let's look at the matrix element of the Hamiltonian again between the Hartree-Fox Slater determinant and such a singly excited determinant. Now here we can, of course, to calculate what that gives, we use just slater conon rules and slater conon rules for the case where there is a difference in one spin orbital because the spin orbital i is, is here and is not there because here it's replaced by spin orbital a. So we have a difference in the spin orbital i and a, which means for the one electron term, we just get the integral with those two spin orbitals and then we get a single sum over Coulomb exchange integrals. Now, if you look at that, uh, compared with uh, previous expressions for the Fock matrix, we can see that this is just an element of the Fock matrix. This is what is called an off-diagonal element of the Fock matrix, where we here we have an occupied orbital and a virtual orbital. Now, if these orbitals which we used here so, are the eigenfunctions to the Fock operator, then, of course, the Fock matrix, as we had discussed before, in the basis of its eigenfunctions, is diagonal, which means that this off diagonal element is zero. So, because this matrix element between Hart Fock and the single excited determinant turns out to be equal to uh, this off diagonal element of the Fock matrix, which is zero because these are the eigenfunctions of the, of the Fock operator, it means that uh, this matrix element is zero. And therefore, Brion theorem says that single excited determinants do not interact directly with the Hart Fock determinant. Because this, this matrix element, this uh, integral over the Hamiltonian between these kind of determinants is zero. Later on, in uh, one of the following weeks, when we will talk about electron correlation and uh, wave function methods for treating electro electron correlation, we will come back to this uh, Priyank theorem in several cases. We will use it to just replace this kind of this integral by zero.